Well, today is lesson 94. Solids of Revolution, part four. Which technically we skipped Solids of Revolution, part three, because that was shell method. So Solids of Revolution, part one would have been disk. I know, I was trying to remember which order they came in, the disk method. Then the second one was the washer method, where you ended up with a hole in the middle once you revolve it, right? Um, three was the shell method, which is not calc AB, so we skipped it. And so four is displaced axes. So the name of the game today is we're still using the disk method, we're still using the washer method, but we're no lo longer rotating around the x-axis or y-axis. We're rotating around other various horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, so that's the name displaced axes. So let's go ahead and look at example one. Let R be the region bounded by the coordinate axes and the lines y equals x and x equals five. Find the volume of the solid found by revolving R about the line x equals 5. So that last part right there is what really changes things for us. Now, I don't know, do you have the visual? I'm going to draw a picture. I don't know if you guys have the visual of what's going on exactly or not here, but... And actually, I'm going to end up drawing, what do I want to say? I'm going to end up drawing two pictures kind of in this one, just to kind of show, attempt to show some of what we're doing. But so the first picture, what do we have? The line y equals x, x equals 5, and the coordinate axes. You got it visualized? Line y equals x is what? Man, oh man. It's going to sound like a lame excuse, but my ring got caught on the binding of the notebook. And man, I. No, y equals x, x equals 5, y equals 5. That's the answer, right? Y equals 5. But we're not trying to find y. I did more work. Okay, so y equals x, that perfect diagonal line. x equals 5 is a vertical line. Okay, so there's x equals 5. And the coordinate axes. So what's the space we are revolving? This triangle here. Okay, so we've got that triangle space that we are revolving. Now, specifically, what are we revolving it? Okay, it's a long, around this line, x equals 5. So we're revolving it around that line right there. Okay, now, that line is a vertical line, which means that is similar to which axis? The y-axis. So as we do this problem, because that is a vertical line that is similar to the y-axis, then what are we going to have to do this in terms of? Y's, right? When you are rotating around the y-axis, we, we work in terms of y. If we rotate around the x-axis, we work in terms of x. Or we're rotating around a vertical axis, Vertical is a Y type axis, and so we are going to be working this problem in terms of Y. Okay? So in terms of Y is the big deal here. Because we are going around the Y axis, that means our disk that we rotate, or a vertical axis, right? That means our disk that we rotate is going to be a horizontal disk like this, right? Because it's going to rotate and make a disk shape around that line x equals 5. 
Now, I'm going to redraw this picture down below because we've got to figure out exactly what works, basically what the differences are. I'm still going to draw my five line in. And we still had this up here, yes? Now, what does this look like when we rotate it? A cone, yes? I mean, we have this triangular piece over here. We're going to have a triangular piece over here, right? I can kind of draw a cone here, but roundish in the front. There's my dotted line to show the roundish in the back, right? So it's going to look something like that. Now, earlier, you know, I showed you that this right here is what we're rotating, this horizontal piece. So when you rotate that, what's it going to rotate to be? Well, if we're just rotating in small individual little ones, we've got this disc here, right? Now stacked on top of each other, they would change in, what do I want to say here? That didn't turn out very, looking very circlish like I wanted it to. But that's that disc. I guess a short cylinder, isn't it? I mean, it's... My brain wants to say, no, it's not a cylinder, but an individual one is a cylinder with a very tiny height, isn't it? So I should say cylinder. Um, but they're going to be stacked, right? Because here's the deal. We have to figure out, okay, how are we doing this? How are we, how do we set up the equation? And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to see. Because normally, if we were to set up this equation right here, it's y equals x is rotating. We could do like an x squared thing, right? Um, like if we were rotating around the x-axis, we just say, oh, it's y equals x, x squared. Um, if we were rotating over here around the y-axis, we'd have to do a subtraction thing. Okay, well, no, because our shape would change there. So, But my question is here is looking at this little cylinder thing and what we call... Our radius because normally our radius is just the equation correct I guess that's what I'm trying to get to sorry I'm taking a moment to get there normally our radius is just the equation so x squared or y equals x and so that's the x squared here our radius is right here okay but if we say My brain's having a moment. We rotate this. It's rotating around there. Normally it's a function, but the thing is, the difference is, is that our function here is in relation to the five instead of the zero of the y-axis. Does that maybe make sense better? Okay, so like right here, if we were to say, okay, let's just, um, do the y equals x squared, well, it's representing this right over here. It's representing this piece over here, which is an x distance, if you will. And so if we're trying to find out this radius right here inside of our cone, the distance from the x, excuse me, the y axis to 5 is a distance of 5, correct? But we don't want this piece here, do we? And so what we're going to take out is an x value. And so we're going to call this radius here of being 5 minus the x. So in other words, instead of just having x in our equation, we're going to put a 5 minus x in our equation. Because this displaced axis puts us 5 away from the original axis. 
So we're going to call our radius here 5 minus x, and that's what we'll put in our equation. Okay, remember the height of this little guy, this height of the cylinder is still the change in y, dy. And then the idea that these disks are going to stack, right? We're going to have this stacked up down here at zero. To what height? How tall is that? <laughs> yep, because y equals x, right? And if x is 5 here, what is this point here? Y is 5 here. I think he caught him off guard, and he was like, wait, what are we talking about? I get it. So the disks are going to stack from y equals 0 to y equals 5. I think, do I have everything we need to set it up? I say, I think we do. Okay. How do we find volume here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the integral. The pi could go inside or outside. Notice he did say 0 to 5. Now, keep in mind... I'm just going to write it in. This 0 to 5 are y values here, correct? Because we need to work in terms of y because we're circling around a vertical axis. Now, um, we said our radius was 5 minus x, correct? And so the idea here, and I'm just going to put it 5 minus x for the moment, 5 minus x as our function because it's or the radius, because it's 5, take away that x value, quantity squared, but we need to be in terms of y, yes? What do we know about x in this particular problem? It equals y, correct? So y equals x, and so what we're really going to write this as is pi times the integral from 0 to 5, and instead of 5 minus x, we are able to say 5 minus y, quantity squared dy. Now, in the future, you'll probably just jump right in and, okay, you know, it was 5 minus whatever x is. x is equivalent to y. You would plug it in based on the equation there. Now, what do we have to do? Yeah. Before you can integrate, we have to FOIL. So pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of twenty-five. We only need to go through four. It'll speed up once we get past the first. I promise. Okay, did I FOIL that correctly? Yeah. Okay, now we're integrating. Pi times, what's the integral of 25? 25y minus integral of 10y. Add 1 to the power, divide by the power. Plus integral of y squared. Third y to third, evaluated from zero to five. Doable though. So pi times, if I put in five, 25 times five, 125, minus five times five squared, 125, yep, plus one third y cubed. 125 over 
5 cubed, 125 over 3. And then officially, you now plug, you now subtract and plug in 0, except all of those when we plug in 0 will be 0. So the 125s cancel, and we're left with 25 pi over 3 units cubed. Yeah, I would say so. Even you said, even though you said yuck, it really wasn't horrible integration, you know, or horrible plugging in at this point. Oh, yeah. It's really, I mean, it's a variation of what we've been doing. The key is figuring out the setup, but really it's just taking, you know, in this case it was y equals x. You're plugging in, you know, or instead of just doing x squared or y squared, it's 5 minus that value squared. Okay, the displacement of the axis. Okay, try the next one. Okay. Region R is bounded by y equals x cubed, the x-axis, the line x equals 2. Use the disk method. So nice of them to tell me. To write an integral that represents the volume of the solid formed by rotating the region about the line, x equals 2. Evaluate the integral. Okay. y equals x cubed. Looks something like that. I'm really focusing on the first quadrant because based on what it told me, y equals x cubed, the x-axis and the line, x equals 2. So our space that we are working with, kind of a triangle thing, but not exactly. And we are rotating it where? About the line. X equals 2. And keep in mind that means our disk that we'd be rotating since we're going along around that vertical line, we're going to have a horizontal disk we're rotating, yes? Are we working in terms of X or Y? We have to work in terms of Y again, yes? Or correct? So because we're going around a vertical axis again, this is in terms of y. Last time, it was nice and easy. y equals x, x equals y. Sub it in. That was the beginning step, the beginning intro example, right? So now, working in terms of x sounds great because it's y equals x cubed, but we're not working in terms of x, we're working in terms of y. So how do you, what do you get when you solve this? and make it in terms of y. Yeah, x is going to be equivalent to the cube root of y. So when we think about that equation, we really don't want to think y equals x cubed. We want to think that x is going to be the cube root of y. Um, so let's talk about this radius that we're going to use. You know, what are we going to put in for our function squared. So the idea, okay, kind of like, I really don't like how I drew that picture, but it's gonna work, okay? So we have this disc here. This whole thing is an x distance, okay? That whole piece is an x distance. So our radius, we only need this part of the radius, right? So the whole distance is, from 0 to 2 is 2, 
and we're going to want to subtract out this x. But what do we use for x in this particular problem? Right. So r is really going to be 2 minus the cube root of y. And if you want, when we integrate, we're not going to think the cube root of y. We're going to think y to the 1 -third. Okay. The only thing we don't, haven't done yet are the boundaries. What do I need my boundaries in terms of? Y, because we're working the problem in terms of Y, which means I need to know how high does this go? What does this intersection point happen at? Eight. Because when X is two, what is Y? And you can go back to the original Y equals X cubed, right? When X is two, Y is going to be equivalent to eight. Okay. I'm ready when you guys are. I got volume equals for you. Starting with what? Okay. The integral from 0 to 8, because we are working in terms of y here. What else? What do we need out front somewhere? Hi, uh, whether it's before or after your integral, I don't count, care. Okay. Okay, yep. So the radius we just came up with is 2 minus y to the 1 third. Whole thing squared, aka quantity squared. And then officially times a dy. Okay. <laughs> That's not nice. Okay. In his brain, he did. Okay. Zero to eight. Okay, we can all foil the first part. Four. Two times two is four. <laughs> okay. 2 times minus y to the one-third is going to be minus 2y to the one-third. Another minus 2y to the one-third is going to make it minus 4y to the one-third for our middle term. And then the last term, negative y to the one-third times negative y to the one-third. Plus y to the what? Two-thirds? Because y to the one-third times y to the one-third, you add the exponents. One-third plus one-third is two-thirds. Or you're doing one-third quantity squared, and when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. That wasn't horrible. It could have been a lot worse. Huh? Not necessarily. Okay. Pi. Okay, integral of 4, 4 y, minus, this is probably the harder part. Okay, we're integrating, so we're going to add 1 to the power and make it y to the 4 thirds. Dividing by 4 thirds is really multiplying by 3 fourths. 3 fourths times the 4 that's already out there is just going to be 3. So minus 3y to the 4 thirds plus, okay, integrating y to the 2 thirds. Add 1 to the power. So that's going to become y to the 5 thirds. Dividing by 5 thirds is multiplying by 
3 fifths y to the 5 thirds. Okay. Pi times, let's plug in 8, 4 times 8, 32, minus, now remember, 4 thirds means you take the cube root of something, right? Or the, the, the thirds part means a cube root. So if I plug in 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, then it's 2 to the 4th, which is 16, times 3, 48. Okay? 8 to the 5 thirds. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 5th then is 32. 32 times 3 fifths. So 32 times 3 fifths. 5 stays in the denominator. 32 times 3, 96 fifths. Plug in 0 for everything, and luckily it's 0. But I checked. Did you notice? I didn't just assume. Well, if I'm sticking with no calculator, 32 minus 48 is negative 16. But I still have to add 96 fifths. Easiest way to add negative 16 and 96 fifths would be common denominator of 5. What is 16 in terms of fifths? 80 fifths. So negative 80 fifths plus 96 fifths is going to be 16 fifths times the pi out front, makes it 16 pi over 5, or 16 fifths pi, if you will, units cubed. Okay. Ready to try example three? Region R is bounded by x equals y squared, y equals 2, and the y-axis. The region is revolved about the line y equals 2. Use the disk method to write an integral in terms of x whose value equals the volume of the solid generated. Generated? Generated. Okay, guys. X equals Y squared. What is that? If you're going to go that way, you can't just say Y equals the square root of X. You'd have to say Y equals plus or minus the square root of X just to be safe, which in all reality, you would just only need the positive root here. But you can also think of X equals Y squared as a... Sideways parabola? Yeah. Okay, I mean, it is a sideways parabola. Because if it's y equals x squared, it's a vertical parabola. If it's x equals y squared, it's a sideways parabola. Okay. y equals 2 is a... Straight horizontal line. Okay. So that's y equals 2. Our parabola was x equals y squared. Let's see, and the y-axis. So where is the piece that we are rotating? This thing. Our words aren't very good to describe this, are they? Okay. Triangle-ish, okay. And it's rotating about the line. Y equals 2.
oh, like, why didn't. Well, the shape, the shape would only end up being the shape right here because, like, you can't get past this point. It's not connected. And so this ends up being unnecessary because the, the area being that we are rotating has to be between the line y equal to the y-axis and this curve. That, that's a stopping point right there. You see, you know, it'd be different if this connect, you know, like if you could actually get through here, we might have to think differently. Did that answer the question? Thanks. So the big graph, y equals y squared is continuous, but since that point there is at the origin, then there's no area under it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. What are we going to work this problem in terms of? In terms of x. First of all, they told me x. But second of all, it's because that's a horizontal axis, right? Like the x-axis. Which means is that if they give me x equals y squared, Nathan mentioned that this is similar to saying y equals the square root of x, yes? Now, because we are rotating this, this means our disk that we're rotating is a vertical disk, right? And this vertical disk now, so now what we're looking at is we're looking at our y distance. Because we're going in relation to the x-axis, and so this vertical distance is a y. So we work to find our radius that we are rotating. I see, I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, but so nope, that's all right. You're a step at, you're a different point, but we will need that too. Yeah, because the distance from the x-axis to our point of revolution is 2. If we take off this y value that we don't need, right, it's 2 minus y. What do we know y is equivalent to in this problem, though? Square root of x. So our radius is going to be 2 minus square root of x. And then I think what Nathan was trying to talk about, what are our boundaries? Okay, we need, we're working this in terms of x, so we need to know what that is right there, don't we? And if it happens when y equals 2, well, 2 squared is 4, and that is our x value. Okay. Disk method to write an integral. So, what are you writing? Pi. There's one point. Integral from what to what? Because we're working in x, we need x values, 0 to 4. Two minus square root of x, quantity squared. And if you want to get full credit, you're going to tack on the x. And did you guys catch the directions? It said write an integral. Did it say we needed to solve, find, evaluate? I mean, number one, it said find the volume. Number two, it said evaluate the integral. Number three, it says nothing of the sort.
And say, still would have had to foil, but. Okay, start reading. Why is that going off already? The next one. Are we, uh, uh, yeah, and at the next one? You knew it had to happen at some point, yes? Most of ours have focused on disk method. However, I did mention washer method, so you should have seen that one come. Okay, go around out of time, Daryl. Okay. The region defined in example 94.3 is row type. The volume of this. Yeah. It just, I looked at the clock. I was like, oh, not as much time as I thought, but. Okay. I'm going to redraw my picture. Now, I really only need the top half of the parabola, right? So I already had a piece of graph looking something like this. All right, so it was the same region. And this is still a value of four over here. Now the difference is it's rotate about the line y equals three. Where's the line y equals three? above. Okay, we are rotating up here about this line y equals 3. Now, you realize what's going to happen here? Our little radius is going to be 1. Mm. Our little radius is going to be 1. I could go with that. Because what's, I mean, essentially we have, we have a big radius here, and that's going to be the tough one to figure out. But then we also have a small radius. I'm just going to see, I don't know, can I sketch this or not? Some years I can, some years I can't. Let's think about how I do this. Okay, you kind of, I'm trying to show <laughs> the best I can the washer there. But the idea that when we start rotating this region down here, there's going to be a hole in the middle, right? Now, keep in mind, our equation was still x equals y squared. We're still going to have to talk about y equals square root of x because we're still going around a horizontal axis, right? Now, let's talk about this lovely washer. If we talk about, let's see. Okay, so if we talk about this disk here. Okay, talking about that disk here. Little r is the smaller piece, right? So we've got the radius of the inside circle. I guess, do I need to re do we remember washer method, how it works? It's big r squared minus little r squared. So it's the, we talk about being the outside function squared minus the inside function squared. Okay. Daryl was taking the easy part here in that, look at your inside. Okay. Your inside, that little r, well, it goes from where to where? It goes from 3 to 2. So it's really just taking that 3 and subtracting 2. Yes, I just wrote 3 minus 2, but I need you to see where that 1 comes from. So the little r is 1. Now, 
capital R, big R. Well, go ahead. Possibly. What was it from the previous example? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the idea here is if we're going to the big radius, the big radius goes from this curve here all the way up to 3. So you're taking the 3. Instead of 2, you're taking 3, and you're subtracting the curve. And the curve is that, well, it was x equals y squared. So, like right here, this is a y value. So instead of doing 2 minus the y value, you're doing 3 minus the y value. Except in this particular problem, we know our y value is square root of x. Now, if I want to be prepared, it did actually say find the volume this time. So 3 minus x to the 1 half, if I want to go there. But that is the whole thing. So basically, if you look at big R minus little r, or big R and little r, big R became 3 minus x to the 1 half. Little r became 3 minus 2. Last time, we used x2 and x to the 1 half, didn't we? So basically, we're just taking both of those values and subtracting them from 3 or whatever that displaced axis is. Okay? So, let's set up our washer method. Remember, washer method is pi times big R squared minus little r squared or times pi times the integral, big R squared minus little r squared. So, for this, this problem, pi times the integral. What do you think the boundaries are? Yeah, 0 and 4. That didn't change. Now, I'm going to write it out the long way to begin with, just, you know, so you can see it. The idea that big R, big R was 3 minus x to the 1 half quantity squared. Minus little r, I'm going to do something crazy, right? 3 minus 2, quantity squared. And I'm only doing that so that if you look back later, you kind of have an idea of what, you know, where the magical 1 came from. So it's still going to be pi times an integral from 0 to 4. The first one we're going to have to boil. I guess it's favorite thing. 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 3x to the 1 half. Minus 3x to the 1 half. So minus 6x to the 1 half. Minus x to the 1 half times minus x to the 1 half, which just becomes x, and then minus, if you do that, 3 minus 2 quantity squared, that's minus a 1, isn't it? You can do one more cleanup step if you want before we integrate. Pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of, and 9 minus 1 is 8. So 8 minus 6x to the 1 half plus x dx. And an integrating we go. Pi times the integral of 8. 8x. Add 1 to the power. Or x to the 3 halves. Divide by that new power of 3 halves. So... 2 thirds times 6, 4, yeah, 12 thirds, so then 4. So minus 4x to the 3 halves, plus the integral of x is 
1 half x squared. Evaluated from 0 to 4. Pi times 32 minus, okay, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the third is 8 times 4 is 32 plus 4 squared is 16, half of that is 8. And then you plug in 0, everything's going to be 0. So we end up with 8 pi units cubed. As I said, we don't need to worry about the last one because it does say shell method that you don't know how to do. What is the shell method? It's instead of rotating a disc, instead of rotating a disc, you're rotating the shell around. And so it's like if you rotate, like normally when we rotate about the x-axis, we work in terms of x. Well, when you rotate about the x-axis, you end up working in terms of y and vice versa. But instead of forming the disc, you're forming shells, like inside of each other. Like we normally form the disc and you pile them up to make the shape, right? These are shells that incrementally larger, smaller, fit inside of each other. Yeah. It, okay, there are a couple of problems down here. 3, 9, and 10 become 15, 17, and 18 from 93.